Okay, now we spent a little time establishing a clear purpose, our why for the project. And we also established an agile mindset. So a way of kind of dynamically moving, flowing with the punches and, and going, uh, you know, getting through some of the changing requirements across the project. Now we kind of need to establish um, some clear hows, like how we're going to manage all this stuff. And so this section is all about um, the technology toolkit for what I call the three C's. Uh, you need a tool for collaborate or coordinating, collaborating, and communicating. So let's get into that a little bit. So like, like I said, any project, big or small, one of the first things that you should do after you've established your clear purpose and after you've kind of developed um, the flow and the, the rhythm of a project and how that's going to go, you really need to establish some tools, some clear tools. And those tools fall in three buckets. You need something to coordinate. You need something to collaborate. And usually that ends up being a small set of tools. And then you need uh, some tools to communicate. And the problem today is not that there is finding something to do every one of these things. It's that there's way too many options to do every one of these things. If you think about how, how you communicate, you can use iMessage or you can use Google Hangouts or you can use email or you can use Slack or there's all these so many different tools to choose from and that's part of the issue here and part of the focus of this uh, section here is to you need to settle in on a few set uh, tools and make sure that your team agrees upon using those tools and sticking with them in order to minimize some of the clutter and overhead and friction that causes when too many things are in two different places. So let's look at each section. The, in order to coordinate, the, what we're talking about here is um, who's doing what and uh, making progress transparent like we talked about in the Agile Mindset. Um, how do we share important deadlines? If we're going to decide on this kind of sprint rhythm, how are we communicating and organizing? What's going to be accomplished during the sprint, uh, during this particular sprint, and, and how do we capture all that stuff? So these are basically project management tools. And there's a couple different examples. Uh, one's called Trello. There's another one's called Asana. Those are specific project management. For a small, simple project with a few people, you can also use Google Sheets. And uh, there's lots of stuff built into Google Sheets that can kind of help you track and help you communicate or coordinate kind of some of the discussion around, uh, around projects. So um, I'm going to show you kind of an example of what toolkit I would recommend if you don't have any particular um, uh, particular opinions in this particular area. So uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So the second uh, category is collaborate. So this is uh, both every project needs to produce something. So whether you're just producing documents or you're building a website or you're um, producing curriculum, you're, you're making something. So collaboration has to happen. And so if one person decides to use one tool, another person decides to use another tool, and you don't have a common place to store all these things, then things get confusing really quickly. So these are some examples, obviously Google Suite and Google Drive. Uh, Dropbox is a place you can store things and collaborate with different kinds of tools. And then if you're in the Microsoft world, OneDrive and Office 365 is a, is a place that you can kind of collaborate and coordinate. And so again, I have some opinions. I'll show you the, what I would choose, but, um, but yeah, it depends on your environment, depends on your particular situation. What I think is most important here is not necessarily saying everyone must use the same tool to produce an image or something like that. Uh, at minimum, you need a single place to store everything so that as the project unfolds over time, um, then you have uh, everything's in one place and so you don't have to go hunting for documents. And then the last category is communicate. And so um, this, this is at the end for a reason. So one might think usually you start in a project, you start right away with communication, emailing this and that, but that can get really messy really fast. And a lot of the times the tools to coordinate have sort of email and messaging tools built in and tools to collaborate nowadays, like Google Docs has a way to mention people uh, so you can bring them into a document. And what I would say is that in, in successful projects, if you really embrace the tools, you end up having most of your communication communication ending up wrapped into your coordinate and collaborate buckets or tools. And that way you can have less that's floating around in, in the kind of nebulous area of this these communication tools like email. So that's why I, I put this at the end rather than say, um, you know, everything's going to be done across email, which we all know gets really confusing really fast. You're going to use the tools given to you to help coordinate. Um, so like through Trello comments, you can coordinate uh, and on a particular task, all of the discussion related to that particular task. 
but you always have to have clarifications and ask questions, discuss details. And you, if you're distributed, like you're not in the same building, uh, you might need to talk in real time. So there's got to be a way to kind of keep people connected and together. And so email is obviously a quick choice for that one. There's a tool that's emerging, if you haven't heard of it, called Slack. And lots of organizations are using this now. Um, I We use it on a regular basis. It helps to um, create different channels that you can communicate across. And it's, and it's meant for organizations to kind of organize work. Um, so we tend to use uh, Slack before we had ever use email. You also have Google Hangouts for real-time chats and things like that. So there's lots of, no shortage of ways to communicate for sure. The important thing is just to pick one. And let's look at a scenario of why that might be. So I got my team here. I got George, Sally, Gina, and this is me up here. And Gina wants to send me a document and wants to uh, gonna get my thoughts on it. So she uses Microsoft Word on a regular basis and she emails it to me in Gmail. Great, I receive it, I open it up. I give her feedback, I send a copy back to her. And, and now at minimum, we have two different documents floating out um, and we're using email, which is mixed in with all the other communication I have to do. But then Sally comes along and she, she's a big Mac user. She wants to use Keynote and, uh, and she stores it into Dropbox and she sends me an iMessage to say, hey, can you look at my Keynote presentation? So I load up Keynote and I get iMessage and I get onto Dropbox and I, and I communicate back with her on that document. Then George comes along, he's a big Google fan, so he, send, he wants to uh, discuss some files he's posted in Google Drive and he does that over Hangouts. So this is actually a very real situation for me where I've been in projects where everyone's deciding to use different tools, but look at what I have to deal with now. So I have, I have Word, I have uh, potentially Google Docs in here, and now I have Mac files. Um, I'm on Dropbox, three different platforms for storing a document. So already it's really confusing. And by the way, each one of these people are gonna communicate with each other, so it's gonna be the same mess for everybody. And then what makes matters even worse is that once I get into my uh, later into my project and I want to find a document that someone sent me. Now I got to search across you know three or four different platforms and remember what tool is used and everything else. If we had to just set at the start, we're going to use Google Docs, Google Drive, and um, and just email even. Then at least I have only one place to search for everything. I don't have to go hunting around. And so to avoid the, this kind of clutter and this kind of mess, which if you've been on any project and you have this kind of situation, you know it gets really messy really quickly, then it's really important at the start of a project, just establish, make some decisions, make it a team decision, but all come together and use similar tools. So here's a particular example. If I was gonna start up a project, uh, and again, a project big or small, I would probably end up using these tools. They're, they're, all, they're all free or all have free versions. So Trello is this is a great, if you've never used Trello, it's um, a pro great project management tool. It's very flexible. It can man manage all types of different projects. And the cool thing about it, it uses this idea of a, of a it's called a Kanban board, where you have these, um, um, these you know, customizable boards and tasks that you can drag around. So let me show you a quick example of that. Okay, so in here I have uh, just a simple uh, Trello board set up. I have three columns uh, to do in progress and done. And it's just real simple. Every time there's a new task, we add it to this task list. And uh, when a task is being worked on, we move it from to do to in progress. And when it's completed, we move it from in progress to done. And so the idea here is you now you can see, okay, what's, what's left in the backlog, what's currently being worked on, and what is done. And each one of these tasks then is a container for all kinds of stuff. So you can have multiple checklists inside, um, inside of, so you can have uh, kind of sub sub tasks that you might need to complete a bigger task. So we can add a checklist in here. I can actually assign different members to to the to the task so we know who is doing what. I can assign a due date so we know when it's supposed to get done. And so this can be a container for all kinds of. Um, all kinds of information and whenever I do a comment they get an email notification so we can actually some of that communication I was talked about is actually wrapped up inside so at any given time if I want to know what's going on in this project I can come here and I can I can take a look and see and and this is what really helps to make things transparent so I'd say if out of this toolkit the only thing you establish is the um, a tool to coordinate or you're only establishing one tool, I would say it's, it's gonna be a tool to coordinate, and I would recommend Trello as a good, simple way to get started. 
So the uh, second category is collaborate. And I think the obvious go-to on this one is Google Drive, uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides all inherently collaborate. You never have to worry about who's got what version when you're uh, sort of sending around, uh, say, Word documents or something like that, and different Word versions are out there in email and stored on different drives. This, this allows you to have one place to access everything. Um, everything is all revision, the, the revision history is tracked, and so it's a good way to kind of minimize some of the clutter and, and just get everyone on the same page. So if you have no other opinion or restrictions, then I'd recommend Google Drive and, and G Suite. And then the last one in terms of communication, I prefer not to use email. And this may or may not be realistic for you and your team, and that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with email uh, per se, but what I like about Slack is that we can focus all of our communication about the project in one place. We can see whether people are online or not, so we can real-time chat if we're not in the same place. We can use it to clarify. And we can also set up different channels for different topics so that we can have kind of an ongoing discussion about certain things. And then probably most importantly there is um, it's outside of email. Usually on a given project, um, we can dedicate, say, a Slack channel to that one project, and that way we don't have to go all over the place um, and we don't have email of, say, four different projects we're working on mixed in. We can focus our communication to one place. Uh, interestingly enough, there's also integrations between Slack, Google Drive, and Trello, so you can get them all talking to each other, and it's another way to keep you all in the same place. So if you're looking for some ideas and you want to start a simple project, um, these would be my go-to choices today. And uh, they might not be my go-to choices a year from now, who knows, but um, this is kind of where, where I am today and my current kind of recommendations for tools. So a couple of takeaways for this from this particular section. Obviously we can't capture every, every little nuance, but these are some things that you want to kind of consider. So the first one is tools are a team decision. So you might say, well, we're being agile and we want some freedom and we want teams to self-organize and that's totally fine, but they're a team decision. It's not just because I think, you know, Microsoft Word is the greatest, doesn't mean I should impose that on the rest of my team. We need to decide on, you know, what's the, what's the commonality between um, what do we want to use and then we have to stick to it. And if we're going to make a change, then we make it as a team. You also want to do what's called a single source of truth. So when you're establishing all these different tools, you want to say, okay, there's one place where we go for our latest documents. There's one place for you where you go to um, to kind of store our discussions. There's one place to go to score all our, store all our due dates so that you're not all over the place. So whenever you're deciding if, if you have to have multiple tools for whatever reason, just decide on what's the single source of truth for any particular topic. And then um, there's the shiny new tool. Like I said, you know, there's some things that have just been around for a while. No problem. If you just use email and Microsoft uh, Office and, and you want to kind of stick to those tried and true technologies, no problem. Just make sure the team is all on board and everybody uses the same thing. The other thing is there's all kinds of new tools constantly popping up in these areas. So you want to, um, uh, you, you know, you want to evaluate and be aware of some of these things and in in your retrospective conversations that's when you want to be um, discussing how tools are working but um, but only change when the, when the team knows why they're changing not just because there's some cool tool we gotta all use um, number four limit the channels of communication so that um, diagram before uh, it the more kind of channels you have the more possibilities for conversations the more confusing it gets really quickly so if you can say we're only only talk to me about this project on slack and trello um, that's a better picture than you have having everybody communicating on five different topics or five different communication channels um, and then like i said include tool discussions as part of retrospective sessions so don't assume they're always working and they're going to work for the rest of time teams evolve, uh, things evolve, so they should be included as part of the discussion and how things are working. And if a particular tool is proposing posing challenges, a solution might be to change the tool. It also might be to do more training in that particular area. And so um, that's it for the tools dis discussion. And uh, next we'll move on to talking about uh, a little bit more about retrospectives and the idea of continuous improvement.